Hey everyone, I just wanted to do a quick pre-build adventure van tour and go over some of the features that this van has and some of the things that I like about this van in particular and why I got it. Uh, first off, it is a short wheelbase Dodge variant of the Sprinter vans and it has a high top and is the passenger version. So it has windows all the way around, which I really like, as well as a, an existing rear passenger compartment air conditioning unit. Uh, so I think that might be really nice. Um, it has these running boards already installed. I don't think these are anything that I would install myself if it didn't have them, but I'm not gonna go through the trouble of taking them off since they're already there and they might be pretty convenient. However, if they do get banged up, I won't hesitate to remove them. And one of them does need uh, to, to be repaired already anyway. Uh, this van, I don't know if all sprinters have these, but there's steps in the front bumper, which are kind of nice. Uh, for this van in particular, the tires are in pretty good shape. Uh, this is the part where it's broken. And it has a little bit of things that need to be done, a little bit of quirks, uh, but I think it's a really good start. So let's take a look inside. I think this is pretty standard for sprinters. Uh, it does have power windows and power locks, which I think are nice. Um, it also has a cool switchblade type key. So that's kind of fancy. And it's kind of neat that the key actually says Mercedes on it. So that's cool. Uh, the seats look like pretty standard Sprinter seats from what I've seen. Um, I don't know if all Sprinters have cruise control, but this one has cruise control. Coming inside. I think it's pretty standard. HVAC controls, uh, debatable radio. Uh, let's see, it has the power door locks. Um, I think this is stability control. This, These two control the rear passenger air. And then one other feature that I really like about it is it has a diesel powered furnace that can both warm the engine block and warm the cabin. Uh, and it's you can set it up on a timer so it can come on say throughout the night um, and come on for as long as two hours at a time to heat the passenger compartment. And so that's really nice that that's all already built in. It does need a little bit of work. I think the uh, coolant pump that actually circulates the coolant after it got heated is not working. So I'm going to need to investigate that. Uh, the dashboard is in okay shape in terms of being cracked or, or faded, but all four of the vents, I don't know who was so aggressive in adjusting their climate control that broke every single fin just about. Um, but I do already have replacements. Another nice thing about this van is that it came with all the documentation, uh, which is, I think, kind of rare. Uh, I didn't mention this is a 2006 version of this van. Uh, here's another thing is it has rear defroster again. I don't know what options are available or, or or aren't available on Regular sprinter vans, so I don't know how much of this I have that is unique Here's the glove lock box Ugh, the glove box and I decided to try to fit maybe see if I could do the CB radio in here I don't know if I need a CB, but I have this one laying around so I figure I might as well put it in, uh, if nothing else, for emergencies. And I wanted it kind of out of, a, out of the way, so I don't know which will be more valuable, the CB radio or having the space. So that'll be to be determined. And moving back, the seats are a little bit dirty, but overall in good shape. They're not ripped or anything. Maybe some, they could use some seat covers or at least a good cleaning. There are a couple of chips in the windshield. Uh, nothing tremendous, but at some point the windshield will likely need to be replaced. And moving back, I think th 
through some of the unique features of this van because it's a passenger van and not a cargo van is you can see it lets in a tremendous amount of light which i really like from all the windows there i will need to get creative on a way to insulate them insulate them and also prevent light from coming in or getting out depending on where i am and the time of day or night um, it also has here's the uh, passenger air conditioning setup I don't think I'm going to keep the full length of this. Um, I'll probably keep the just this back section of the ductwork, which will be over the bed area. So uh, I'm just tall enough that I have to scrunch down to be able to walk underneath it. So I don't want to have to do that constantly. The van came with two rows of seats. So it has a three, a fixed three person row that nicely matches the front seats, but I don't know that I'm going to have anything to do with this uh, bench in this build, just because it's a lot of seating for people that I'm probably not going to have in the van, and the space will be more valuable used else ways. Uh, these are the, I already picked up, or actually Santa already brought them, some new dash components with the fixed vents, so those will fit nicely. I was looking behind here. This is, the rear air is, the rear air, air conditioning compressor is engine driven. So it has some plumbing that goes from the engine back. It does work rather nicely, uh, but the engine does have to be running for it to work. Although I don't intend on having a battery set up large enough to be able to run any kind of air conditioning without uh, the engine running, so that's totally fine. Because this is a passenger van as well, it has a lot of these trim panels um, and plastic covers. This it does stay, I just had it pulled off to look behind it. Um, let's see, what else? A lot of these trim panels, I think it provides a nice finished look. Some of them are dingy, I don't know how well they can be cleaned up. If nothing else, I'm probably going to wrap them all in speaker box carpet just to give them a finished look. I also have for at least the bed frame, I don't know what else framing, I got this extruded aluminum which has this unique design that makes it really light and really strong and also really adaptable. Uh, it's about, it's kind of expensive, so if you can find a deal on it, that's the best time to get it. Um, but it is about the same weight as a 2x4 by foot, I think. And it's about half, it's as thick as a 2x4, but only half as deep. So uh, you can do the same, you can probably do the same type of framing with this as you could 2x4s, but need less material and then also have more space inside of uh, whatever it is that you build just because the two by fours take up more room. This fan did come with a wheelchair lift. Uh, that's, I don't, I'm not gonna use it for anything, I don't think, but it is kind of a nice feature to have and I'll show that in a second. Um, but this will probably get taken out and sold or uh, I don't know, maybe I'll put it in the garage and use some cool 12 volt hydraulics for something. Um, but it does need repair currently as one of the hydraulics leaks. Um, moving around, I picked up this solar panel. Uh, I got, a, I think, a pretty good deal on it. Amazon was having a deal on them, so uh, I went ahead and snagged one. I'll link it in the description if anyone's interested or has experience with them and can tell me how good or bad they are. And I also already picked up a little solar charger. So again, I'll link it in the description if you have experience with one of these on how good or bad it is. It is a PWM charger, not a uh, MPPT, I think, Max MTTP, uh, the better kind of charger. It's the cheaper one, but I think for one panel and what I'll be using it for, it should be fine. Uh, I was doing a little bit of testing with some 
LED with an LED light strip just to see how well it lit up the interior. And let's see. So that looks pretty good. I don't think it's definitely not going to be how it looks finished. But in terms of the amount of light that it puts off or the amount of power that it uses, it's pretty impressive and way brighter than the original dome lights. Um, it's also kind of nice that because this is a passenger van, I don't know, maybe the cargo vans have dome lights as well, but it already is wired for um, some electronic stuff up here. I'll link these um, LED light strip below too, uh, if anyone's curious as to where those came from. Uh, it came with also with a two-person passenger seat. This seat uh, I didn't realize this when I got it, but it's actually a really cool seat that I, I'm going to try to incorporate into the build. It's just kind of a vinyl cover, so I may eventually get it reupholstered. But the neat features are this about the neat features about this seat are that it has seat belts, so it can be used for driving down the road. But also, it can fold down, and then you pull this handle. And it lifts totally up and out of the way. Uh, and in these kind of adventure van builds, anything that can be either used as something and then tucked away or uh, converted into something else. A lot of people do bed uh, table combos. Um, that's really cool because you can have space and also have uh, seating. So. This will be really nice. I will incorporate this, I think, somehow. Um, I don't have that fully worked out yet. Again, uh, I don't know the difference between this or the cargo versions, but the passenger van has a sort of subfloor and also a vinyl uh, cover on top of the subfloor. So it's, I don't know how good it is. I do need to get pull this vinyl up and see if what that material is and what kind of condition it's in. But that is kind of nice for sound deadening and insulation uh, and that sort of stuff. It came with, I think, six of these. These are for holding wheelchairs to from rolling around while driving. I don't know if I'm going to use them for anything in the build, but they're definitely kind of a neat thing to have, uh, I don't know, on the shelf in case I need some kind of heavy-duty retractable strap for anything. Um, I don't think... Oh, because this is a wheelchair van, or has a wheelchair lift in the back, it already has, underneath the passenger seat, a second battery. And the cool thing about this second battery is that it's automatically isolated from the engine battery when the ignition is turned off. So what that means is this will be my house battery and I've read that this isn't enough for a lot of people. Uh, I don't plan on running too much electronics um, but I'll cross that bridge when I get to it if I need more power but in the meantime this is already really nicely set up. It's a hundred amp hour battery. Uh, it will charge from the engine. It will turn off from the ignition so I can drain it and still start the van. And then this is also what I'm going to be hooking the solar panel up to just to top it off if I don't start the van for a couple of days or um, I don't know if for some reason my engine battery dies, I can maybe slowly charge it with solar. So uh, it does run pretty well and has pretty low mileage on it. We can go ahead and start it up. I'm assuming it idles appropriately. It does feel smooth. Uh, it does have a check engine light. That's the high, that's high pressure in the fuel rail. I think it's P0088. Uh, haven't sorted that out yet. That came on right after I bought it. If anyone has any sprinter information about high pressure in the fuel rail, um, 
let me know. I've read some things about the fuel rail needing replacing, or a lot of times it's a sensor, or a lot of times it's uh, the injectors or are leaking. Um, I've also heard fuel filters might cause that. Uh, I did, I have the Torque app and a little OBD Bluetooth transmitter, OBD2 transmitter. Uh, so the, and watching the fuel pressure as I drive it around, it seems to be around 4,000 PSI at idle and up to maybe 22,000 PSI going up a hill uh, and giving it a lot of gas, which seems to be in the range of what's appropriate for uh, these vans. So if you have any information, um, definitely comment below. That would be useful. If you have any other information about any of this, comment below. That would be useful. But I think this will be uh, a pretty good base for a uh, adventure van. I'm gonna do the standard platform bed type situation back here. Uh, I might do it a little bit different, a little bit lower than uh, a lot of vans out there because I do wanna keep the windows um, open. I don't wanna block them too much if I can. That's one of the reasons I got this one is for the windows. So I don't wanna end up just covering them up. Um, I'm going to make it a little bit higher in the middle, I think, to be able to put a mountain bike underneath. And that's all going to be out of this aluminum material. If I have enough of this aluminum material left, uh, I'm going to do maybe the kitchen setup uh, from the front seat to the wherever the bed ends up ending. So that will be my kitchen situation here. This folding seat will be more... Uh, toward the middle and will fold down toward this side uh, So that would be that should Be nice for passengers if I need the seats for a passenger to sit in the back, but also uh, have some kind of table Deal come out of the kitchen situation to be able to use that as a desk or dining room table or whatever um, And then finally I'm going to also use this material on the roof as roof rack stuff uh, for mounting the solar panel, um, maybe other roof rack related uh, activities. I'd really like to have some kind of roof platform to put a seat up there, maybe make an aluminum ladder that goes up one of the sides, uh, but that's still to be determined. And needs some grease in places, but all in all, I think that's it. Uh, this is the beginning. So if you're interested in seeing not only how this build turns out, but some of the adventures that this van goes on, definitely like and subscribe. Uh, comment below with any thoughts or suggestions, especially if you have information on that code. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching and it should be a fun journey.